Who's ready for a crochet mystery? I am, I am. <laughs> today is clues number six and seven. We're gonna do two clues today as part of the mystery crochet along. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com as we continue our 10 clue mystery crochet along and by now you will have known it's an afghan. Today we are going to work on two clues and we're going to give you two weeks in order to do it because it may take you a bit of time and we just wanna make sure that we're not pushing you. I have to say though I think most of you will probably finish it tonight <laughs> or by the end of the night anyway but we're going to give you an opportunity. In today's clues number six is that we're going to complete one granny square on its own and then we're going to complete the next one where it's attaching to its neighbor. I'm going to show you. You're gonna see in this particular sample that the afghan just doesn't attach to each other but it's actually kind of hugging each other and it's actually a really interesting concept. So stay tuned right now. You have uh, clues number six and seven coming at you right now. So if you're following along in this tutorial you realize that you still have these outstanding and now you have your outside which is the color, the, the main color and it's now ready to be attached. In today's tutorial what we're going to be doing is doing a braided join and so we're going to be joining the two together just like so. Let me show you what that looks like because this is a technique I didn't ever do before this tutorial. So this is what it's gonna look like when it comes together. You can see that the braiding is just like so but the braiding cannot be done really simply um, in the sense that um, you have to plan ahead when doing the braiding. So let me show you some techniques and get you started. In the next part of this tutorial I'm going to show you what you need to do in order to uh, get prepared in order to do this process. In the next part of this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make 20 of these simple little balls. We need to make these balls ahead of time before doing the braiding. In the next part of this tutorial I'm gonna take you up to my kitchen and I'm going to show you an easy way to be able to make all 20 of these really quickly and give you some tipper, uh, tips and pointers on what to do in order to make them. So in the next part of this tutorial I'm gonna leave you with that and then I'm gonna come back and then I'm going to explain a little bit more on how to put these together. So I'm all about the speed. I'm all about making the tips really quick. So what I'd recommend to you is that we gotta do the braiding effect for 20 squares. So prepare all of your 20 balls up at the front of the project so that you have it all to work with in your little kit, right? So what you're going to need today is that we have four colors that we've been working with with this afghan. It's A, B, C, and D. The A color is the color of the main square. So in this case it is blue. So we do not want to touch that color. So we only want to play with B, C, and D. So we have for you the instructions that you're going to need in order to put it together. But here let me tell you. Contrast B which is the second color that you used is six balls that you're going to need. Contrast C and D are both seven balls which gives you a total of 20 balls. But here let me show you on how easy it is to make these things because if I can show you some quick tips then you don't have to pull out the measuring tape every time. Now the braiding effect is something that I've never done before so I actually kind of learned a little bit and I thought to myself if I'm a little off I'm gonna provide extra yarn in order to fit into the little mini balls. Do not do that. So just follow the instructions as it, as it shows and what it says is that you need to prepare the balls and the balls and I'm gonna give you different metric and imperial numbers. So it can either be eight yards which is 24 feet or it can be seven and a half meters if you're using the metric system. So that's all you're gonna do. So what I decided to do for myself is that instead of doing the 24 feet um, on my particular sample that I've already uh, practiced off, I did it 30 feet and I totally regretted it. So don't use extra yarn if you don't have to. It ends up being a waste and you will find it will slow you down because of the way that we're putting it together. So what we're going to do for the first one is that we're gonna pull out our trusty measuring tape and what I want to do is that I want to measure 24 feet. So I'm just gonna take the yarn and just begin to measure. So just do that if you have like another kind of measuring device, even tiles on a floor you could use and just I'll put it out and only measure one. So that's tip number one. So I'm just sliding the measuring tape out with the yarn in hand to six feet. There's six 
And what I'm gonna do is that from the six feet, I'm going to go and pull the yarn going back toward the front. Okay, and I'm gonna lock my measuring tape in. And I'm just sliding this, but sliding the yarn from the yarn ball with the measuring tape. And so now I'm gonna just slide it again along to another six feet. Okay, now I have 18 feet and I'm gonna slide it again down with the yarn ball. And this should take me to 24 feet. So if you don't have a lot of space to work with, no big deal. And so now I have 24 feet. See how awkward that is? So that's what I wanna show you here. So I'm gonna trim it off and I'm just gonna let the yarn from the yarn ball come back over here. And here is my quick tip. I'm gonna roll this yarn back up into a ball next. The way that I'm going to make the ball is what's gonna make it a lot easier for you. So I have a yarn ball winder, so I can either use that or I can use a toilet roll or anything else that is a standard roll. And what I wanna do for the, if, the, if I'm using the yarn ball winder is that I wanna put my, my yarn on so I've loaded my ball winder and now I'm ready to go and now I'm going to make it into a ball using the ball winder but I'm going to use the ball winder to my advantage to be able to count the number of length that I need. So if this is the exact length that I've cut, all I need to do is just load it and count on how many it is. I'm gonna use a pen this time. This is actually my second take because I couldn't remember how many <laughs> rotations I did. So every time it hits the down bottom, it's gonna count as one revolution. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And twelve takes me right to this point here. So I know when I got this off and I'm gonna write twelve down this time. <laughs> twelve revs, twelve revolutions. I know then when I take another ball from or take another string now from an actual real yarn ball that I have not measured out in advance, I can do the same thing. So let me just load it up. And again, I'm looking for it to be down. Okay, same thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And so now I can just simply cut that, and now I have the length that I want that matches the other one. So the same th rule can go. So for example, say I wanna use uh, a toilet roll, all I can just do is that I can measure the very first one that I have and I can count the number of revolutions. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. So 43 takes me to the end, so I'm gonna write that down. So you could just use anything like this. Now my toilet roll might be a different size than what you have at home. So just measure out that first one and here's a technique on how to be able to make all the balls really quickly. Once you have that done, just slide it off and you can grab another color in order to put your project together and start another item. But I like the ball winder because every time you rotate it once, it rotates this 10 times. So just as a reminder, you're gonna need the 20 balls then and you're going to need contrast B for six balls, C and D for seven each and it works out to be really quite cool. So I'll leave that to you and when we come back, I'm gonna start doing the, the process. The braiding is something that is really unique and I've never learned how to do that before until this tutorial and it has been totally amazing and my hair is driving me crazy. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, so now that you have all of your 20 balls done, now it's time to begin the joining process and here's the diagram provided by Yarnspirations. Now, there is a technique of putting this together and basically the first one, we're just going to go all the way around. So the first part of this tutorial on me demonstrating, I'm going to show you how to go one all the way around that will not be joining to a neighbor. And then the next part, we're going to be joining. Now here's the thing, do you notice that we're starting up here and basically you can see your neighbors being attached here? You can never ever ever start a, a square here or here 
or here. You always have to start on a corner that is not affected by a neighbor. So basically what's gonna happen is that when you go to put this together you're going to start off with your first box and then you're gonna add your next ones. Now the first ones are really easy because you're only gonna be attaching at two points or at one point each. So these two are gonna attach when you come all the way around. So you're gonna go up just like so and then you're gonna come and do the next part. Notice that every time you do that, that square right here, this corner is going to be clear just like it shows in the diagram right up here. So my point being is that when I started doing this off camera for practice, I did a really silly move where I decided I'm not gonna follow the rules because it doesn't say not to do that in the in the instructions. But what I did is I did like this U shape. And what this caused me to do is that when I, if I were to do like this and then I have to fill in this square, there is no free corner just like here in order to do it. Therefore, I cannot finish the square right in the middle. So you have to make sure that whenever you're doing this you're always going to have a corner that is free in order for you to do it properly for when you're going to do the braiding effect. The reason for that is that see this braiding here? It's already taking effect here. So basically you're going to start and just like you see here there's no way to begin to really make that a nice smooth transition and in fact it will not work out for you. Trust me I know. So I'm going to go a little bit more through this diagram first before I take you to the first part of this tutorial. So here's some key concepts. We're going to be joining in the top corner like I've already said and when we go to join we're going to be taking that big loop just like we see and we're going to be making sure that it's attached just like you see here. So it's gonna be attached as we do the slip stitch and then we're going to do the corner. Now I put in here, remember upstairs when I was showing you I wrapped the toilet roll 43 times and then I did the one or 12 revolutions. This may change for you so don't uh, rely on that information. This was just my own notes when I was writing it upstairs. The biggest factor that you need to watch for is these loops here. And there is 10 of these between each one of the corners. So the corner is not included in this 10. So the key concept when you're doing this as you're going all the way across, you should be able to count 10 of these spaces just like so. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now I remember on Facebook some people uh, claim that they didn't have the right stitch counts at the end of this. If you're off by one or on one side or the other, as long as you end up with 10 of these gapping spaces just like so, it'll always work out for you. So if you have to flub it, this is where you're going to do it because you have to make sure you have your 10 so you can effectively attach to your neighbor all 10 times plus doing the corners of each. And so as long as you're following that, I'm gonna show you as we go all the way around just in case you need to flub it. So the key concept is looking for the 10 and making sure because the border that is really terrific on this particular project really relies on this to be 10. If it's not 10 you are going to be in some serious trouble. So make sure that there's 10 in between each one of the corners. In the pattern you're going to follow a diagram and these diagrams have it all laid out so that you never have a braid that attaches together and it happens to be the same color. The braid will totally lose its effect is if you had a uh, yellow on or sorry green on one side and green on the other. You won't get that nice cool effect. So the layout shows you where the squares need to go. So the, the layout is done in shades as well as colors. So sh this is contrast D and when I go to do it I wanna make sure that it's going to join to a, a neighbor that has contrast B. Now D is the final of this. So in my particular sample this is D and so I want to make sure when I go to attach it I'm going to attach it to a B. And then when I go to attach the next one B is going to attach to a C. So it's the existing last color of the braid of that's what it's referring to. And if you follow this diagram you notice that it's a chevron. So if you follow this you will never have two colors that will sit side by side so you, that you won't lose the braiding effect just like so. So let's begin to do the very first square that is not attaching to any neighbor and it's really really easy. So we're just gonna start off with the slip knot and that's how I prefer to do it. What we're going to do is look for the very corner and you can see that these three are the corner and look into that middle one there is three single crochets there. You are gonna go for the middle one but before you go in there you need to go underneath this loop to grab that loop and then insert into the middle single crochet and then just grab both strings and pull it around to join. And then what I just do is that I just use both strings, just chain up one because you can hide it and then I just want to single crochet back into that stitch. 
Okay, so I've just joined it and I'm just gonna trim that off afterward. So we have to do the corner first and so the corner always has chaining of three. One, two, and three and we go back into the same stitch. If you look at the diagram that makes total sense. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to work across the side. So the side is just really really simple. Here we go. Every time we're going to make this gapping space we wanna make sure that we chain three first. So one, two, and three and then back down here we wanna skip two of the single crochets. One and two go to the third. And so you want to then chain three again. So one, two, and three and then going back in to the third one over so you're skipping two. By the way I am using a mini ball for this. You are going to want to use a mini ball. Okay so you're gonna chain three or chain three, one, two, and three and then skipping two go to the third. So it's one, two, three, skipping two and go into the third. Okay one, two and three skipping two go to the third. So remember how I said we're looking for that magic number of ten. So one, two, and three skipping two and one, two, and three and just for uh, record's sake I have no idea if I'm gonna end up with the right stitch count which is even perfect because if I have to flub it I can do it live on camera. So one, two, and three skipping two and I'm making myself get all the way close to the other side. So one, two, and three and then coming in and here's what I want to do. So I'm skipping two. Now the next one is going to be going to the corner but I wanna count first. So starting back here do not count the corner. We go there's one gap, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well wait a minute there's only nine and I got a corner left. Don't forget you still have to chain three before you even do that corner. So that is your tenth. So now we have our three and we're gonna go right into the corner. Now here's what the thing is. If you're missing one stitch or if you have one extra don't worry about it. Just literally look for the middle and go for the single crochet right in the middle. If you have to flub it this is where you're going to do it. Okay so it doesn't look so obvious. But before you can go into that corner see this loop down here? You have to make sure that you go under it first and then do your single crochet using it just like so. So you wanna grab that then chain your three and then going into the same stitch to form your corner. So you gotta make sure you grab these loops up before you begin your, your project. Now you'll notice that these loops are just kind of just sitting inside so you can pull them. So when you're on your afghan is sitting down as your afghan be able to find its own tension you will notice that these will adjust. So let's begin another side. So we go one, two, and three Okay and then just simply skip over two. Pull things out of the way if it's in your way to be able to see it. So one, two, go to the third. So one, two, and three. Okay skip two. So we only wanna grab that, that chain there on the corner. So one, two, and three and I'm going to do one more corner with you and then I'll leave that with you. So one, two, and three. So the first one is no sweat. Big deal right? And then here we go. So I'm going to the third one over. Okay and then one, two, and three. And one, two, and three. Going to the third one over. And then one, two, and three. Third one over. One, two, and three. And now this is where I wanna count because I see I'm getting really close to the edge. So coming back here I do not count the corner and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and that's fine because the, the tenth one it still needs to be done. So one, two, and three and before I insert it into the corner and basically you can see that I have three stitches here instead of two. So this is I'm just still gonna put it into the center one here. So if this happens to you you can do that. So somewhere along the line I kinda goofed up but I want to leave this tip in for you be just in case. So go underneath this chain and then go into the corner and single crochet around it and then one, two, and three and then coming back in. So completely go all the way around. I've already shown you how to do it and then you're going to fasten this one off and this one is going to stand alone and be your very first one that you start with when you go to put things together. So please do that and I'll meet you back up as we fasten off.
So I'm coming all the way back around and I certainly wanna make sure I got my 10 in here. There's only nine right now because I still have to chain three to, in order to attach it to the beginning of where I started up the single crochet. So that's how I would do that if it was just all the way around and this is the first square. This is the only square that you're going to do like this without attaching to a neighbor. Okay in this part of the tutorial what I have here is that I have two done and I'm going to go in one direction here. This one here is not here at this time and so basically it's only going to be attaching on one side. So I want to really show you what happens in the center here and in the next part of this we're then gonna do this one here where we have two sides that are joining and we're going to be doing the braiding effect and that's going to be happening next. So just as a recap we're going to be starting off in the corner just like so. Remember that we can never ever start when we're actually already in the attaching mode. We always have to make sure that this one and this one are clear so that they are not ever attaching at the same time. So you will notice here that we wanna make sure that it's free and clear on the corner. So when I go to do this one here, if I'm looking at it, I have these two that are attached and so when I go to start this one here, I wanna make sure that I'm starting in the upper corner over here so that I can do this side here and then come down and do the attachment and then come all the way back around on the under, on the other side. So let's I begin to do that next. We also have to pay attention to the colors to make sure that the two braiding colors are never the same. So I'm going to be using a coral color. So making sure that this does not match and you, again you can follow the diagram on how they come together. So let's begin on the upper corner and we're going to create a slip knot just like so and we are using another little mini ball here. And the mini balls are just, um, you have to work with the mini ball at this point. So absolutely must, if you don't do it, you're not gonna be able to do this step. So we're going to join in the corner just like we did before. This time though, we're going to be coming across as normal and it's the other side we're going to do the braiding but we still need to use these mini balls. So again, just like before, go up underneath this big loop here and then go into the corner and then just join it. Okay and then I'm gonna use both and just pull through one for chain one and then single crochet back into the same one and then chain three. One, two and three and then back into the same stitch. So that is your official new corner. So now we're gonna come across the side just like we did in the last part of this tutorial. Just like before we're going to chain three, one, two and three and then simply just pull back the stitch uh, this line here so you can see it. We're gonna skip two, go to the third. Just like so and then chain three and then skip two and go to the third. Chain three, skip two, go to the third and you're gonna do this all the way across. Except for the final corner, that's when the game plan is going to change and we're going to start the braiding. The braiding is a new technique. I never learned it before this tutorial series. I've never, I don't even know if I've seen it done before. I could have, I just never paid attention. So one, two and three. But it's a technique I'm definitely gonna use in the future and it's a great idea to get to learn it now. So one, two, three. Again skipping two, going to the third. Now one, two, three. So the braiding technique can never be done from the balls itself like the big balls. Always has to be done from mini balls and you'll see why in just a moment. So I wanna verify my count first so I don't include the corner. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and this last one chaining three is going to count as ten. But before I go into the corner like before I wanna move this up and come up underneath it and then go into the corner and this is where the game plan is going to change. So we're going to attach during this whole level here. We wanna get our next square available to us and our ball is ready to go like this. It's the mini ball. So we're going to chain three first. So one, two and three and this is where th the plan changes. We're just going to just pinch this loop and pull, you, pull out your hook. You wanna come to your next square that's on the other side and you wanna come right into a corner. Okay, it's the same corner that you see over here. So you see that these are attached and you want to insert down. So this is the front side of your project that you can see with the, the budding coming up at the middle. Coming straight down into the corner gap space. Grab this loop here and pull it through. Okay, but you're not done. So what you wanna do is just pull up enough so you can see this knotting area like where the stitch is coming up. So pull it tight again. 
just pull it up like this and you can see the string. Now because these are mini balls you have to pull this entire string through each and every time. And this is pulling through the remainder of that ball. Now here's the advantage to this is that yeah it's a pain in the butt right now but as you crochet more this ball will get smaller and smaller in size. So on a regular table I can do this really quickly and on my studio here not so much. So I pulled the whole thing through and then what I wanna do is come back down into the same corner on the first one and then single crochet again going around this chain. So here's the thing. You wanna continue to go across this one here and remember it's chaining a three. One, two, three. Pinch this and then come into the next space on the other side. Okay, it's the next one that's moving down on the other one. Come straight down, pull the loop up like so and then just pu pull it nice back tight to there and then pull this ball again through. And I wanna keep this ball relatively organized so it doesn't tangle on itself. I've never had that problem. Again, it's my studio table. It's not necessarily the best place to always to film. So we're gonna then, once you have it through, is that you're just skipping two on this and then coming to the third. And so this, what this is doing, it's actually wrapping around each other instead of actually tying to each other. So they're basically just floating within each other. So let's do the another one. So one, two and three. Again pinch, take out, come to the next gapping space that's available to you on the other side. Okay, pull up. Pull it back tight to the hook and then pull it through. So again every time you pull through like this, this is gonna be less and less because you've been doing more and more chains. So it gets faster and faster as you do it. So then once I have it through I skip two, single crochet in and then again chain three, one, two and three. Again come to the other side, straight down, pull through and again pull this through. Does that make sense? So I had a hard time deciphering these instructions when I first looked at this because I didn't understand that these mini balls were like that. So it's something that I kind of learned. So one, two and three. Again drop and then coming to the next. Down. And it's an amazing look. So if you ever wanted to do this with other kinds of granny squares all you just have to do is just basically just figure out how much yarn you're gonna need. So I would do one all the way around first and then figure and then probably pull it apart. Figure out the length that you need. Add an extra bit for buffer and then you can basically make mini balls and do this with any other kinds of squares that you want. So one, two and three. Again next one. So what I want you to do is I want you to go all the way down this one and I'll meet you up at the corner and it's the same technique and you'll see that it's gonna get faster and faster. And then basically because we're only attaching it on one side, once you get beyond this side you don't have to worry about pulling things through anymore. One, two and three and uh, it then becomes a lot faster as you're going all the way around as well. So it's only um, when you have two sides that are attaching together that it will slow you down a little bit but not enough to really worry about it at the end. So I'm now coming up to the end of the line you can see that the braiding effect is really taking effect and this string going to that mini yarn ball is getting smaller and smaller. Remember that when we get to the corner you still have to go up, up underneath this chain first. It's a single crochet just like so. So it holds it in position and then one, two and three and this is the very corner so then you go into the very corner of the other side straight down and then pick up. So this is the attaching of only two sides together. So this means that the remaining of this particular square I no longer have to pull anything through. So you, this is the very last time you'll have to do it and you just use the remainder of the string to continue to go all the way around. So once you have that pulled through just single crochet into the same stitch because it is a corner and then chain three, one, two and three and just again skip two and then go all the way down. One, two and three and continue that way.
So I'll meet you back up and you're just gonna go all the way down and then back around the base here and you're going to pick uh, join it to where you started and then you can see at this point you can see the two are joining just like so and it has a really cool effect. So I'll meet you back up as we go uh, and I'll make sure that we fasten off and then the next time we're gonna fill in the, the this square right in the space right here where we're going to attach on two sides instead of just one. So I'm coming up all the way around. Do not forget to verify that you have your 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then I have the corner and then again on my far side here I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then of course we have to chain 3. And then we're going to attach to the beginning single crochet that we started with. Now here's the thing. I'm going to attach it now and you're gonna wanna weave in your ends and hide them really nicely. Watch this. This is how much yarn I have left over. Not a lot. So you wanna make sure that when we did our balls we wanna make sure that we have enough yarn to be able to finish it off but you don't wanna be pulling through another whole skein of yarn. So you wanna make, be very conscientious that the little balls that you used are going to not be too long that you have to pull way too much through. So I'm gonna weave off and next time we come back I'm going to start you off and then we're going to do this section here where we're going to attach to the two. So I'm back again and we're going to attach to two sides now at one time. But I really want you to look here. Here is there a, there's a secret. You will notice that each one of these will have attached to the same one. So no matter what's happening you see that this square would have attached to this one, this square would have attached to this one, and this square would have attached to this one. So on the corners they will all come to the same stitch that's available to you. So you can see here and it just happens naturally is that the pink went into this green here, this coral went into this green. So when I go to do this one here because it's in the middle I'm going to also attach it to the green so that it's all the same. Okay so that is just an easy way of, of doing the middles. So that's what we wanna pay attention to the most and then I'm going to start you off. Remember we have to start in an upper corner that is not attaching to anything and then we're going to come around and then finish it off just like so. So let's get another color. In this case it's going to be green for me. So I'm going to start off with the green and I wanna get my next square up and ready for you and then essentially here it is. Okay so it looks the same but this time we're going to attach it with the green. So you can notice that when I go to attach the green there is no green here or here. So I wanna be very strategic that I don't ever choose a coral or a pink in this case so that I don't lose the braiding effect that you get just like you see here because that's what's really cool about this afghan. So I have my little mini ball ready to go and when we start off we're not gonna worry about pulling anything through because we're gonna be starting on a corner that has nothing there so it doesn't attach to a neighbor. So let's uh, begin and simply again coming up underneath this big loop first look for the middle single crochet in the corner and that's where you're gonna attach it. So just attach just like so and I'm using both strands to attach. It just it seems like it's a more secure joint in my opinion but again if you have a better way then you're welcome to do so and then I just grab both and then I just chain use that the chain one and then I single crochet back into that same stitch to finalize and I'm gonna trim that off afterward. So we're going to chain three. So one, two, and three to do our first corner coming back into the same one. So there is our first corner. So I wanna pull things out of the way again. Just move this down with your hands and then just go one, two, and three and then skip two and go to the third one. Okay, one, two, and three. Skip two, go to the third. 1, 2, and 3. Skip 2, go to the third. So 1, 2, and 3. So this is very easy. Now the advantage to doing this, see you're using up some of this yarn that's coming through this little ball. So that means that there's less yarn to pull through. So I guess that what I was trying to say, I'm just doing three, I'll talk my way through this, is that I thought to myself if I just do up two sides or three sides first and then I wait for the last uh, side in order to pull it through, that was why I was meaning that, that you cannot fill in one that uh, it has to, these two sides have to be empty because it doesn't work out when you go to attach it. So I was trying to cheat the system a little bit and figuring out how to do it so that there's less yarn to pull through but you can, you have to leave the two sides empty in order to make it work. So, <laughs> so we try, right? You always gotta figure out if there's ways to cheat the system and figure out how to work it. Uh, in this case, no go. So I'm just chaining three and just skipping over to, to the third 
one, two, and three. And then one, two, and three. Skipping to the third. And I wanna do a count because I'm pretty close. So again, I'm looking for the gap spaces not including that corner. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this will be the tenth. So one, two, and three. And before I go in there, pull this loop up, go up underneath it, and then go in to do a single crochet. So now we're going to start attaching to the neighbor and we're not going to attach where these two meet. We wanna attach it on here. Okay, this outside here. So let's uh, begin to do that. We're going to go one, two, and three. Pinch it, grab the other one, right in the corner itself, go straight down. It's a gapping space, chain three space, and pull up. So you already know how to do this. So this time, even though it's a pretty little ball right now, you're gonna to totally unwind this ball and pull it through there. And then that'll be a yarn just sitting to the side that you'll continually pull through. Again, I find a kitchen table is better for this uh, because you can pull the string out of the way and it's completely out of the way. Studio table here is a little confined. So I got that through and again, I wanna go back into the same one because it is a corner, single crochet. Okay, so now I can see that the two are now joined as a braid. So one, two, and three. Again, drop it, come to the next gapping space on the other side, come straight down, pull up, and then pull this through again. So do this side, I've already shown you how to do this. So do this side and I'll meet you at the corner over here where I'll show you what to do uh, just in case that you're confused at this point. So I'm coming up all the way down and I have the one side now attached just like you see here. And so now I'm in the corner here. So do you remember what I said in the diagram is that everything will attach to the same one. So in this case that I have here is that everything is being attached to this upper square. That just happens to be my example. So I'm going to pinch and I'm going to do the corner first. So I'm just gonna come into the corner. But remember I have to pull this one up first. Okay, so get in under that, that chain of 21st and then single crochet and then one, two, and three. And this time go into the one where they're all going into. In this case it's this one coming straight down and then pull up. So that's the only trick. Now I will tell you and I'm gonna tell you at the end of this tutorial, this is the hardest part of this entire tutorial. Once we get beyond today and beyond these set of clues, um, this all gets much easier. And so if you've gotten your way all the way to this point, you should know that the remainder of the clues are just easy breezy in order to follow through. So once you have that in, make sure that you come back into the same one, the same stitch, Okay, to finish that corner and then chain three, one, two, and three, and then just work down the next one that's available to you. Okay, so it's the next uh, gap. So don't go in the corner of this one because you've already went into this one. So just working your way all the way down. I've already shown you how to do this. So it's just again just following the procedures all the way down. And I'm going to leave the re rest of this for you. I need to finish this off off camera so that I can be ready to do the borders when it comes to this. The border on this particular afghan is phenomenal. Like it is absolutely phenomenal. It's if you think what you're seeing is already cool, wait till you see the border that is planned for this. It's incredible. So one, two, and three. And again, the gap the other side. So this next one and do this all the way around. When we come back, I'll finish off and then this is your set of clues and you have two weeks to do this because this takes a little bit more time and we're gonna let people catch up and let people take their time in order to do the assembly process as you see it. So I've worked my way all the way down. So I've attached here now and I've attached here. And now this is the final edge before I come back to the very beginning. And the final edge again is just like before. There's nothing to do. So one, two, and three. And just again skipping over two and going to the third. So it's only ever gonna be two sides that you're ever gonna be able to fight with when you do it. It's actually really easy. And again, I promise you that this is the hardest part of this entire tutorial. The rest of it is all downhill. You will notice that the entire border of this uh, particular project will be absolutely phenomenal. I can guarantee that and if you don't like it, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I'm in my opinion it's one of the best borders I've ever seen. So one, two, and three. And with this particular design it is absolutely stellar. So one, two, and three. So just work yourself all the way down. Remember don't forget you still need to get that final 
10 gapping spaces because the border that you're going to do for this absolutely matters for that. So you wanna make sure that you're keeping your counts accurate. So one, two, and three, one, two. <laughs> and basically I just wanna count and verify. So remember I don't count this one that's right on the, the edge, like that's the corner. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, and three and then coming into the very beginning single crochet that we started with and fasten off at this point. So that would be how you do it and again I'm going to pull, watch, there's not a lot of yarn ball left and I'd rather have a little bit extra like this than a whole yarn skein to pull through and I have actually done it to the point where um, I didn't have enough as well. So you wanna make sure that you have a good count at that point. So please fasten that off and just uh, begin to attach your entire afghan together and at the end of it don't forget to post your photos on Facebook. We do wanna see uh, just how it's done. The braiding effect is so amazing with this that when you see it from a distance you are going to flip out. It's actually that amazing and worth the time. So that's it for clues number six and seven. I'm gonna give you two weeks in order for you to complete off this element. By the end of two weeks, all of your granny squares should be put together. I have to tell you, the border that goes around this afghan is incredible. It, incredible is not even a good enough word. It totally makes this afghan as one of the best borders I've ever seen. Until then, I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations.com as well as the Crochet Crowd.